To understand reactions in organic chemistry, it is usually an advantage to identify the key step in the mechanism. For some classes of reactions, that key step is the same. That's the case for many alcohol oxidation reactions that tend to involve syn eliminations to give carbonyl compounds, like syn eliminations to give alkenes. Alternatively, the mechanism may, in some cases, proceed via an antiperiplanar-like elimination to generate a carbonyl. And the exact mechanism is almost certainly dependent upon the conditions, upon the base, and the particular substrate that's being used, so it's important not to overgeneralize. There are lots of organic oxidation reactions of carbonyls that involve sulfur-based reagents. All of these reactions involve displacement of a leaving group from sulfur in the plus 4 oxidation state, treatment with a base, to give either a syn or an antiperiplanar elimination. That is the key step in all these processes, and that's the one to focus on. After learning the key step, then all that remains really is to color in the picture by elaborating on where the reagents come from. Many of these reagents are derived from DMSO. The trick is to identify how the oxygen of DMSO is being turned into a leaving group. It could be reacted with trifluoroacetic anhydride to give a trifluoroacetate, or with oxalochloride to give a chloride. And incidentally, in a variant of this process, dimethyl sulfide can be oxidized directly with a reagent like N-chlorosuccinamide to give the same sulfur-4 chloride species. Going back to DMSO as a stunning material, if we react this with dicyclohexyl carbodiimide to give a leaving group which will become a urea. All these variants have different names according to inventors who thought of the reactions. So organic chemists talking together might say that they did a Swern oxidation of a particular alcohol and everybody would know the conditions for that then were oxalochloride and DMSO. But it's much more important to understand the mechanism than it is to remember the inventor's name. One thing to note about the sulfur oxidation reactions is the key intermediate is a sulfur 4 species. The reagent has to be reduced to a lower oxidation state to oxidize the alcohol. In iodine chemistry, there's one common reagent that's used to oxidize alcohols, and it exists in the plus 5 oxidation state. Displacement of an acetate from that reagent by the alcohol will give an alkoxide, then an antiperiplanar elimination will generate the aldehyde and iodine in the plus 3 oxidation state. That's the key step of the reaction, that's the one to remember. It's maybe hard to remember the structure of this reagent, but maybe not if you can recall the synthesis. Oxidation of 2-iodobenzoic acid will give an iodine 5 plus agent that's acylated on both those oxygens, generates an acetate which adds to the iodine to give the neutral triacetate, which is the Desmartin agent. Appreciation of chromium-based oxidation reagents starts with a little bit of inorganic chemistry. If we take the rather insoluble chromium trioxide and dissolve it in mild acid, we get dichromic acid, and in strong acid, that reverts to chromic acid. Dichromic acid is a stronger oxidation agent than chromium trioxide, and chromic acid is the strongest in the series. Incidentally, it's the same with potassium permanganate, which under basic conditions is a milder oxidant than it is under acidic conditions. We can solubilize chromium trioxide by making a pyridine adduct. So we have an arsenal of chromium agents to use, but mechanistically, all these agents behave in the same way. Addition of an alcohol will give a chromium alkoxide, and then beta elimination of a hydrogen via abstraction of 
that hydrogen with the negatively charged oxygen on the chromium will give the aldehyde. Chromium reagents act in the same way to oxidize aldehydes to acids. The first step is hydration of the aldehyde. Even a small equilibrium amount will give a hydrate that can then react with the chromium agent and beta elimination will give the acid. For an example of a chlorine based free agent, let's consider chlorous acid, which is chlorine in the plus three oxidation state. That will add to the aldehyde, again giving a species which can undergo a beta elimination reaction. In so doing, reduces the chlorine to plus one and generates an acid. Interestingly, all the oxidation reactions we've talked about in this video featured five membered ring transition states. It's hard to find examples that involve six membered rings. There are some, like this aluminum or aluminum based disproportionation reaction, but that's also a reduction of an aldehyde. Some interesting reductions of carbon yields tend to feature six membered ring transition states, and that's the subject of another video. Thank you for watching. This is Kevin Burgess. If you want to see more videos in this series or purchase a book on organic reactions, please visit the website www.byinquisition.org.